So we have some problems involving radical equations as well. So where we've seen this before is in our special triangles. So we, when we have our special triangle of 45, 45 degrees, we have, this is basically half of our square. Okay, so this is one of our perfect shapes. And we can work this out exactly because we know the symmetry of this object. And we know this is one, one, and we can find out the length of the hypotenuse by using Pythagoras. Here, the same thing. This is half of an equilateral triangle. Okay, that's another perfect shape. We know the symmetry of it. We know this is two, two, two. And so if I take half this, this triangle, we have two and one, and we can work out that third side using Pythagoras. Okay, and we get our 30, 60 triangle. Now, when we have these triangles, because they are perfect shapes and we know the symmetry, we use exact values for these because we can find the exact, we don't have to approximate, it's not something we need to measure. We know exactly what that, those lengths are due to our symmetry. And we can use this, these proportions then to find exact measurements of these unknown sides. So if I want to find out the length of A, B, C, and D, I can use the ratios here. There's a few different ways I can do it. I can use this as similar triangles, okay? ratios between, just say this, understand that this is, the ratios between is a scale factor. So between here and here is a scale factor of three, root five okay so this is a proportional relationship so it's all about times and divide if we can find our times and divide factors the other thing that we could do is we can set a ratio within the triangle and these are our trig ratios so one to one root three root five to b is the same ratio as one to one so i'm going to do this first one using a trig ratio so i know that the ratio of one to one is equivalent to 3 root 5 to side B okay so 1 to 1 is equal to 3 root 5 to B which means that 3 root B is equal to 3 root 5 okay so if we we don't need to set up a ratio for that necessarily but you can see that there's our multiplier okay we can use our multiplier of times 3 root 5 or we can do our up and down multiplier times one. Okay, we can just do times one and b is equal to three root five. You can solve this as an equation if you like, cross multiply. You can just use intuition if you like. So here we can solve for a using Pythagoras. We can use a, the scale factor ratio okay, of times by three root five, or we can use a trig ratio. So I want to use a trig ratio again to do this. To write, to find, solve for side A, I'm going to use the ratio 3 root 5 to A is equal to 1 to root 2. Okay, So the vertical side to the hypotenuse is the same as the vertical side to the hypotenuse. Again, the direction is important. Okay, here we can solve for a we can you can use any method to solve for a you can cross multiply you can use a mu multiplier uh, I'm going to use this multiplier times by root 2 and I'm going to times by root 2 to solve this so I get a is equal to 3 root 5 times root 2 or 3 root 10 okay so that's one way to do it some of you may have chosen to Solve this algebraically, solve for A algebraically, you need to times both sides by A and divide both sides, or sorry, multiply both sides by root two. So we end up with root two, three root five is equal to one times A. Okay, so A is equal to three root 10. So that would be an alternative method. And a third method you could use in this case would be just use Pythagoras. We can say that 3 root 5 squared plus 3 root 5 squared is equal to a squared. So we end up with 9 times 5 plus 9 times 5 equals a squared. This works out to be 45 plus 45. And a is equal to square root 90. Okay, and we'll just use the principal square root since we are 
just using side length. So we'll get rid of the minus and then simplify that into 3 root 10. Okay, so those are three different ways you could have solved for that side A. And remind, reminder that we want to keep these in exact values. For C and D, we can do the same thing. I'm going to use a trig ratio for C. So I'm going to look at my triangle here. I know I'm going to use three, uh, root 3 and 2. So I'm going to say that root 3 to 2 is equal to side C to 3 root 27x. Okay, and then I can just cross multiply here. So I end up with the square root of 3 on the outside, 81x, and that's all over 2. And that's going to give me side C. I should simplify that. There's a perfect square there. So I get factor out the 9, multiply it times 3. I'm left with x and all over 2. So there's my value for C. For D, we can say that this is exactly half of this length. Okay, we can use a ratio D to 3 root 27x is equal to 1 to 2 on our special triangle. And again, we can just solve this algebraically if you like, and we end up with 3 root 27x all over 2. And we could factor out the 9 there, so we end up with 9 root 3x all over 2. Okay, and again, you, if you want, you could have used Pythagoras. You can use a scale factor. We can say that this there's a scale factor between these two triangles, and we can find that scale factor by dividing. We find any multiplier, the way we find multipliers is we divide. Okay, dividing two numbers will always find a multiplier in a proportional equation. Okay, so there are a few different strategies there. You, you need to be confident with at least one. You should know, have a variety of strategies when you, uh, in case you get stuck with one.